Um, so wow, I'm a little red. I, I hope that's the sun, not the, uh, the uh, alcohol. finished the uh, Morocco food and wine pairing um, so uh, definitely if you're gonna come down here for food and wine if it's your first time um, make sure that you take advantage of all the different booths and stuff but if you've been down here before um, there's a ton of different things that are available to you um, not just the food and wine booths but pairings and other things that you can enjoy uh, that you do have to sign up ahead of time uh, there's wine seminars there's food and wine pairings um, definitely something to take advantage of. Something, definitely something to take it uh, to do, um, especially if you've been here before. Uh, so this one, as I said, is the uh, Mediterranean food and wine pairing. Uh, so me and and my wife, say hello. Hi. Mrs. Hazel says hello. Um, so what we did here was we did the food and wine pairing. So here you can have a little bit uh, idea of what's going on, and I'll sh as I would talk about these things, I'll show the different images of the food that we took. The uh, wine was amazing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to the wine. Um, so it starts off with a bit of a champagne flute. Uh, apparently it was a uh, cava uh, champagne uh, flute that was uh, pretty good. Um, I'm not a big champagne, f I, I don't like champagne. Uh, I tend to find that it's a little yeasty, a little too bubbly for my taste. Um, I did enjoy it uh, more so than your average champagne. Um, probably give it a 2.5 out of my scale. Um, I wouldn't go back and buy a bottle of it, but it was, it was tasty. I enjoyed it. Um, and then we moved on. Um, started off with the, so, uh, the, um, the, the wine connoisseur of the uh, Spice Row area, uh, giving us some instructions and some wine tasting notes about the different wines and how you can enjoy them. Um, and then the chef came out and gave us a little introduction about you know, what we we're going to actually be eating. Uh, so the first dish was a rock shrimp with fresh corn, plum tomatoes, garlic, and uzu lemon butter. Um, a lot of the people we were with really quite enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a little bland. Um, personal flavor, uh, personal taste, personal opinion. Um, I, I think it could have stood for a little bit of salt and pepper, as, as the case may be. Um, the wine that we went with it was the Paso a Paso uh, Varedo. Uh, I'm probably butchering that all together. Um, also wasn't a huge fan of it. It was a white, I, I'm more of a red drinker. Uh, it was it was good. Um, not Disney good, just regular good. So I gave it a two. Um, I gave a, I, I gave the, the uh, shrimp also a two, unfortunately. Uh, together, uh, when you ate them together, it did enhance it a little bit, not very much though, in my opinion. Um, two five as a pairing, um, it was pretty good. Did you, how, what would you think of it? So I thought the shrimp was about a three, and I do, I do enjoy the shrimp. Um, and I thought the wine was probably a two, two five as well. Okay. Um, for that one. But the, okay. the next one. Yes, the, the next one, uh, we definitely had a differentiating opinion here. Um, so we have the Porticolo Rosé. Um, not a traditional pairing. Um, typically you have uh, with your tuna, because uh, the food was a spicy tuna with eggplant, zucchini, capers, and a, uh, a caper salad, and a basil oil. Um, typically you would have a white with tuna when it comes to <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> uh, one of the people that we, we met here. Um, so the, the non-traditional pairing, uh, typically you would have a white with a tuna or a seafood along those lines. Uh, but because it was so spicy, uh, the, the, the Sauvignon, uh, not Sauvignon. Rosé. Wow. No, no, no. Um, Salome. Sal Wow. What are you I've trying had a to say? lot of alcohol at this point. Yes, he has. This is awesome. <laughs> I never see him like this. This is um, amazing. <laughs> sol solume. The, the wine 
connoisseur of the group. Um, sommier is what sommier, he's trying to say. Yes, and failing miserably <laughs> at it. Um, we, we've had quite a bit of wine at this point. In addition to all those previous alcohol objects, both food and, and, and wine and, and drinks. Um, yeah, we drank all the way up to this, so this just added to our drinking for <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, so he was like, oh, we want to go a little bold. Since it is a spicy food, uh, uh, adding a little bit more of a red into it, so adding the rosé aspect um, was something he was going for. I wasn't a huge fan. Um, I only gave it a 2.5. Um, so I absolutely love the rosé. I thought it was definitely a very good, clean taste um, for a rosé. I did enjoy the tuna, but it was a little spicy for me. That's just me on my, you know. And it was a cold dish. It was delicious, though, um, but a little on the spicy side. Um, I actually quite enjoyed the spicy. Um, I'm much a fan of the sear tuna or raw tuna uh, fan. Uh, so I actually, I, I kept trying to think, that my rule for a five, is, is there anything I can think of that I could improve this dish? Um, I could not. <laughs> so this this is one of the few fives that I've actually uh, have on my list. I'd give it a four. You give it a four? four? Yeah, she, she's not big on the spice as I am. Um, together, I actually thought that the rosé brought down the dish a little bit. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I gave it a, a, a three five. Uh, as a pairing together. I thought the rosé was pretty delicious. I am a rosé fan. I'm not a rosé all day type of girl, but I do like my rosés. Um, but so I give it a four for the rosé. Yeah, I give it a three five uh, together as a pairing. Um, I, I felt that it felt a little watered down. I did try it just with water because, you know, there's a lot of alcohol. So, so there been is. Alcohol. There's been a lot of alcohol. <laughs> yes. Um, so I did try it with water, and it was better than water. So yay there. Um, but I did think it took away a little bit of the uh, the food and, and flavor dish. itself. Next dish. Okay, so uh, we had a Rio Madre Tinto, uh, which which is a, Re a Spanish Rioja, which Rioja. is one of my favorite types of reds. I am very big on the Spanish reds. Um, love them, love them, love them. In fact, gave a couple of recommendations while we were sitting there <laughs> with all the people that were there with us. Um, I personally thought that this pairing was amazing. The lamb was a little overdone, but I get why they do that when it's a big group setting. They want to make sure they're not serving a certain type of really medium rare or, you know, lamb and have people complain about it or have any issues with it. So it's a little overdone for my tasting, but I think if you came here and ate just as like a couple of the two of us, it probably would be served a little more medium rare and then it would be absolutely perfect. Yeah, so as, as she was uh, indicating, the uh, the dish was a uh, coriander crusted lamb chops with fresh artichoke bottoms, uh, uh, Moroccan olives, and sun-dried tomatoes. Um, it was uh, probably a medium, maybe a medium well. Um, I would have liked it a little bit more rare myself. There was myself. no pink. Yeah, there, there was no pink, no pink um, in it. Um, that's not true. I had a little pink in some areas. Well, then he got lucky because mine had no pink. Yeah, um, I, I think that was just by accident. Um, however, the dish itself, so the, the, the Roja, pretty good for a Roja. Um, I gave it a 3.5. Um, the lamb itself, I gave a 4. Um, I, I could have stood for, uh, the, the coriander crust was good. Um, it gave a nice aftertaste and, and, you know, trailing end in your mouth. Um, I could have stood for a little bit more black pepper or a little bit more spice to it. Um, but I do understand that that might have taken away a little bit from the, um, from the lamb itself. Um, but together, um, I don't think the wine really took away or, or, or added too much to the to the dish. Um, but I would totally give the wine a five. It was absolutely delicious for a Spanish red. I definitely will go and buy a bottle of it. Uh, yes, unfortunately, uh, you can only get these wines here in Spice Row at uh, uh, Disney and Epcot. Uh, it's not available in the normal festival center. Um, but uh, I, I, I didn't take away from the dish. Um, it, it was still quite enjoyable. Um, I just don't think it really added or removed anything. Um, which, honestly, you know, a good wine should add a little bit. Uh, a good pairing should add a little bit uh, to your flavor. But you know what? Your, your own mileage is going to vary. My own taste buds are mine, and you're going to enjoy what you enjoy. Uh, we finished off with a, uh, a dessert pairing, 
Uh, so this was a four course meal. Uh, we had a uh, Jorge, Jorge Ordeza select a, a Muscat. We had a Muscat. Uh, the image is gonna be there. Um, paired with some baklava. Um, I've had Muscat before. Haven't been a huge fan of Muscat. Uh, it's typically been a little too sweet, a little too, uh, uh, well, sweet. Um, this wasn't too sweet. It was definitely sweet, um, but it was balanced with a lot of other flavors, a lot of other notes. Um, had a little lemon notes to it and stuff. Um, I, I gave it a, a three, uh, so better than your average Muscat, definitely. Um, something I might even go out and buy and enjoy. So, um, the name of it is actually Jorge Ordenez Selecion Especial Muscat. She can do um, the Englishes that I, I can. I can, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely would give it a four because I've had Moscato before and I've absolutely hated it thinking it's absolutely too sweet. This wasn't as sweet as most typical Moscatos are, um, but it was very delicious and perfect for a dessert wine. The baklava was very tasty. That I would probably give a four or five, almost to a five. It was delicious, absolutely flaky. Sashio flavors came through. As someone who is partially Greek, I definitely <laughs> give them the rave reviews on that one. Yeah, the, the baklava was good. Um, it was it was a little sweeter than I like, but it's baklava. Uh, so I was only probably going to give it a 3.5. Um, together, however, um, the, the muscat actually took away some of the sweetness of the baklava. It, it mellowed it out a little bit. Um, possibly because the, the muscat wasn't as sweet as I expected. Um, so I'd probably together give that a, a, a 4. Um, I, I do think the muscat in, in, improved the flavor of the baklava. Um, I finished my baklava. I did not because it was pretty full. <laughs> That's I, the only reason. I, it was I, delicious, but it was very full already at this point. I, I finished the baklava. But um, I, did, I did finish the Moscato. <laughs> yes. That was very good. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, so we're that. So this is, uh, as I said, the Mediterranean pairing uh, food and wine. It was $100, I want to say. About $89 per person. $89 a person. Um, and worth it. Yeah, it was a full meal. Uh, the host wine, alcohol. was very good. The chef came out, very nice person. And you can tell they really care about the food that they're giving us. Yeah, I was speaking to the chef um, afterwards um, and talking about some of the other dishes and stuff like that. And very personal, very approachable, uh, which was nice. Um, you oftentimes don't get a chance to do that. So I appreciated that. Um, so that is the Mediterranean pairing here at Food & Wine. Um, definitely Ooh. recommend it. This or any of the other pairings, you're going to learn a lot about the D. Uh, different uh, wines of our area, the different foods of the area, and how, how they can match together. Whether you agree with them or not, completely different story. Um, I but would you say can definitely, definitely do a pairing if you're coming here for food and wine. It kind of breaks up the monotony of just going to booth to booth to booth to booth. Yeah. So it's totally worth it. Yeah, if it's your first time to food and wine, enjoy the booths, don't worry about it. But, you know, if you've done food and wine before, take advantage of some of the seminars. I've also heard the Italian one is very good. I had a woman inside tell me how much she enjoyed it. So there's also that one too. Yeah, so there's that. Um, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this. Uh, we're going to be posting more from around here at the Epcot Food and Wine Festival uh, 2017. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. And uh, well, obviously Mrs. Taste is enjoying this. <laughs> I might be a little biased. Yes, just... Just a little buzz. I might be a little buzzed as well. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll continue on here and uh, see you guys next time.